Hello, sports fans and football fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And as you can see from your screen, I am here with my week seven picks for the NFL slate of games that will be week seven. Now, in week, you know, if you recall, going into week six last week, I was coming off two bad weeks. I was coming off a 500 week where I was 8-8, eight and eight, and then I was coming off a uh, week where I was one game, one or two games under 500. Not doing well the two weeks previous, but this past week in week six, I did very well. So we are going to, um, we're going to try to expand on that and, um, you know, try to, uh, Take it to the house. We gotta get we gotta get better. But last week in week six, I was eleven and four. Yes, very good record. Eleven and four. And who knows? It could have been better if I don't know, San Francisco had managed to beat a Cleveland team that they're much better than. Or even if the Eagles had managed to beat a Jets team that generally they are a little better than. And if you saw the game, you know that the uh, Jets got a little lucky there. So, um, And really, so did, so did Cleveland. I mean, the 49ers inexplicably were down at the 23, the Cleveland 23, trying to kick a field goal and missed it as the final seconds were waning so I don't know you know I mean I could I was I was 11 and 11 and 4 I could have been like 12 and 2 but 11 and 4 I don't want to downplay 11 and 4 so I am definitely going to take that um I would uh yeah I mean I'm I'm quite I'm quite happy with um 11 and 4 so Let's take a look at these games. Let's go through these games. I'm making nice and big for you right there. The first game, as you can see on the docket, is the Jaguars at the Saints. Now, the Jaguars have been a Jekyll and Hyde team, and the Saints have been a poor offensive and great defensive team. Um, the Saints, I'm not sure how they're doing on the injury front. But uh, Trevor Lawrence, the uh, Jaguars quarterback, he may be, I mean, he's questionable right now. They don't know. Uh, Doug Peterson, the coach of the Jaguars, says that he's day-to-day. -day. The Jaguars are on the road here. But I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to, first of all, let's get my pen out here. All right. I am going to go with the Jags. Let's take the Jags in that game. Um, I, you know, certainly if Lawrence plays, I think he can. I, I, I think they'll be able to figure a way to uh, work around the great uh, Saints defense. But their offense, like I said, the Saints offense is terrible. So let's move on to the Sunday games. Uh, the first Sunday game you got is the Falcons. At the Buccaneers. Now, the Falcons last, lost last week to the Commanders. It was a close game. It was a closely fought game. The, the Falcons, they're still, they've got their issues. They, they have trouble scoring. They have, um, you know, and, and even when they win, they don't put anybody away. The Buccaneers, though, um, we don't know. I mean, their quarterback is Baker Mayfield, and his status is also questionable for this game. Not to mention they aren't the greatest team. And you know that I am high on what the Falcons are doing this year. I am going to go with the Falcons here. So let's go with the Falcons on that one. Um, and then let's move it along, move it along here. You got the Raiders at the Bears. Now, this is, uh, this is an interesting game because uh, both teams could be playing with rookie quarterbacks. Uh, the Raiders could have a, a kid named O'Connell, I think his name is, uh, because Garoppolo is probably not going to be available. And the Bears could have Tyson Baggett. 
Badgin, Bagel House, I don't know. But anyway, he might be the quarterback for the Bears, although he has shown flashes of brilliance in, uh, you know, in not only the preseason, but he also wasn't that bad. He did have a turnover in the game um, last week against the Vikings, but he hasn't been terrible. Um, and he's, uh, he's out of Shepherd University, set all kinds of like passing records at Shepherd University, a division two college. Um, and, uh, and his, Hey, as a side note, his father is apparently one of the, the best in history arm wrestlers. So, you know, there's something right there. And the Bears are at home. The Raiders are not a great team, even when they have Garoppolo. But they don't. So I am going to say that the Bears are going to pull this one out. Uh, I don't know if you would call that an upset special, um, especially if it ends up being two rookie quarterbacks going at each other. But I'm going to go with the Bears. I'm going to go with my team right there. Next one you got is the Browns at the Colts. Now, the Browns are on a record pace to have one of the better defenses in the uh, in NFL history, if everything keeps up like this. Um, I think they're allowing like uh, 17 points a game or something. Um, the Colts are going to be without Anthony Richardson possibly for the rest of the year. In fact, the owner, Jim Ursay, says that they will be without Anthony Richardson for the rest of the year. That means that it is going to be the Gardner Minshew show for the rest of the year, though I am high on Minshew. I think he's a, probably the best backup quarterback in the league. Um, the Browns, Maybe without Deshaun Watson, we don't really know. They're keeping that close to the vest. If not, it would be P.J. Walker. The Colts are at home. I am going to go with the Colts. Uh, I just have a gut feeling about this. I think this will be a close game, but I'm going to go with the uh, I'm going to go with the Colts in that one. Next one you got is the Colts and the Giants divisional matchup uh, between these two. Uh, the Commanders coming off a big win over Atlanta, um, but we'll have to see. Now, the Giants are just a mess. The Giants are a complete mess. I'm not really high on the Commanders. I think their defense has played worse than was expected coming into the season. They have a good receiving core, but Howell is still learning on the, on the run here. Uh, on the fly, and their offensive line is terrible. Howell has been sacked probably more than any quarterback in the league, uh, but the Giants are a complete mess, and they might not have Daniel Jones at quarterback this week either. I'm going to go with the Commanders on the road. Next one you got is the Lions at the Ravens. Now, the Ravens, like I said a few weeks ago, and I stand by this, the Ravens are one of those teams like Philadelphia and um, like Kansas City that you expect them to be this great juggernaut of a team, and they're never that. They, when they win, they barely win, and they lose sometimes to teams that they should beat. The Lions, though, have been a completely surprising pleasantly surprising team, especially to Detroit fans. So even though Detroit is on the road, I am going to do, I'm going to circle the Lions on that one. Let's go with the Lions. Next one you got is the Bills. The Bills are traveling to the Patriots. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to go with the Bills here. I mean, I don't think a lot needs to be said. Um, the Bills do have some injuries that they're dealing with, but the Patriots... Even when the Patriots are 100%, they're a JV team. So, yeah, I mean, they're just a shell of their former selves. Then we that takes us to the Cardinals at the Seahawks. And I even had to look and see who I had in that one. No, I didn't. Uh, we're going to go We're going to go with the Seahawks and the 12th man in Seattle. Um, they're a, first of all, they're a better team than the Cardinals are. The Cardinals have played with some spunk this year, and they've been a little bit uh, better than probably people expected of them to be. But I'm still not 
ready to say that they would beat the Seahawks in Seattle. No way. Now you got the Steelers at the Rams. The Steelers, now they had the week off last week, but they, um, you know, they still have that terrible offense. And I don't think that terrible offense was fixed over the off week. Uh, Matt Canada is their offensive coordinator. And as far as I know, they did not give him his walking papers. And uh, so those same guys, Pickett and uh, the other guy, you know, that has a name that sounds like Pickett Pickens. Um, and, you know, Najee Harris. It's it's a JV offense. It is just not a good offense. They When they win, they win because they have a stifling defense that, oh, by the way, scores for them as well. So, uh, But the Rams are an exciting team. The Rams are exciting. They're scoring points. They're playing inspired football and they're home. I'm going with the Rams. Let's take the Rams there. Now, this week, as we go through these games, you're going to see that this is a week where I have the potential to, uh, this could be a devastating week because uh, some of these games are really close games and I could be picking the wrong team, which, you know, shocker. But uh, yeah, um, we'll see. I, I would love another 11 and 4 type week, but we'll see. This is, this is going to be a strange week, I think. Now you got the Chargers at the Chiefs. You remember last week the Chargers lost a very low-scoring affair to Dallas when they were at home in L.A. Um, and uh, Herbert is dealing with a, uh, a broken thumb on his non-throwing hand. But uh, as many of the analysts have pointed out, even though it's the non-throwing hand, it has to be bothering him. It would be bothering, you know, anybody. So, um, and the Chiefs are the Chiefs. Now, again, uh, the Chiefs, like I said, I put the Chiefs in that category of they play down to their competition. When they win, they barely win. They Sometimes they have to go down the field and pull off a last-second score to win the game when they really should just put the team completely away. But the game is in Kansas City. They still have Mahomes as far as I remember. I am going with the Chiefs in this one. So now we're getting down near the end. We've got the uh, last two games on Sunday and then the Monday night game. And one of those games is the Packers going to visit the Broncos. Now the Broncos have a terrible record this year. They, I believe, only have one win so far on the year. But the Packers are a mess. I think Jordan Love is still learning. He's still learning the ropes. The Broncos' offense is actually uh, serviceable. It's at least serviceable, and sometimes they do score a lot of points. Their defense isn't that great, but the Packers' offense isn't that great either, so it's not like they have to stop a great offense. And they're at home. I think Russell Wilson says, hey, let's ride, and let's ride all over that Packers team, which I would love to see. And that's what I'm calling. The Broncos are going to win at home. Next one you got, hey, this one, it, it seems like it'll be a good game. And maybe it will, but maybe it won't. The Dolphins at the Eagles. The Eagles are coming off a tough loss to the Jets. A team where they have better personnel and probably should have won the game. But they didn't. And that's what I've been saying this whole time about the Eagles, that they were maybe a smoke and mirrors. They were stacking wins, but those wins were not impressive, and um, and they almost lost a couple coming down that stretch. And then you got the Dolphins that just blow people out. Now, they did lose to the Bills. That was surprising. But I am going to go with the Dolphins on the road in Philadelphia to beat the Eagles, which brings us to the Monday night football matchup. And this is the 49ers at the Vikings. And you'll remember, you will recall a couple weeks ago on my telecast, um, my picks video, I said the 49, I said that the 49ers and, um, and Brock Purdy are a, uh, Brock Purdy particularly is a systems quarterback. 
And if you can disrupt the system, you're going to beat the 49ers. Well, guess who disrupted the system? I thought it was going to be the Cowboys. You know, crazy me. I thought the Cowboys were going to disrupt that system. But who knew it would be Cleveland? The Cleveland Browns. Yeah, you didn't mishear that. The Cleveland Browns disrupted that system, and they made Shanahan look like an idiot. And, uh, yeah, and they lost to the uh, Browns. But <clears throat> they're playing the Vikings. The Vikings are having a tough year. Um, there's nothing really impressive about the Vikings. The 49ers, now, they did have some key injuries to... Um, to McCaffrey and uh, and one of their other guys, one of their other key guys. I don't know if they'll get those guys back. But even if they don't, really the 49ers still have that stifling defense. And I think they still have better personnel all the way around than the Vikings. So I'm going to go with the 49ers, even though they let me down last week against uh, Cleveland. That was crazy bad. So... Um, there's my picks. What do you guys think? Let's, you know, do what I did last week. We'll do one last recap of them all. You got the Jags over the Saints. You got the Falcons over the Bucks. You got the Bears over the Raiders playing at home in um, Soldier Field. Got the Colts over the Browns. The Commanders over the Giants. The Lions over the Ravens. The Bills over the Patriots. The Seahawks over the Cardinals. The Rams to beat the Steelers in L.A., the Chiefs to beat the Chargers in Kansas City, the Broncos to beat the Packers in Denver, the Dolphins to beat the Eagles on the road, and the 49ers to beat the Vikings. Let me know in the comments who you disagree with, if there's any of them that you disagree with. Um, or let me, or just list your picks if you want to do that. But that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.